What made him this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. On May 15, 2014, Christian posted on Facebook requesting that if any generous donators happen to be interested in sending him gifts, they should send him cash or gift cards. His post was accompanied by 19 logos of companies for which he would like the gift cards to be applied. He soon after posted a wish list consisting of desired LEGO building sets. This was soon followed by an album of LEGO mini figurines that he needed slash wanted. Members of the Quickie forums researched the listed items and estimated that Chris's entire wishlist would cost between three and five thousand dollars. In the comments for his posts, his Facebook friends, Kim Wilson and William Elliott Waterman, questioned his reasoning for wanting and needing these expensive Lego sets. Christian stated that the gifts would be for future reference and events. Kim asked what these events were, since Christmas was not for another eight months, and his birthday was even longer after that. After reading the lengthy comment thread, Chris clarified that he planned to refer to the wishlist when special days like Christmas were coming up and would choose an item to get as a present. He added that he still needed replacement sets to replace the ones that were damaged by his house fire. At around that time, Chris asked his online gal pal, played by Kim Wilson, to search for and message women on his behalf on the online dating website OKCupid. On May 24th, he complained to her messaging a woman whose profile was only a 71% match with his own. He also deemed her to be quite overweight and unappealing. The gal pal emailed him back. Chris, you shouldn't turn people down because of appearance when you're not a skinny mini yourself. Keep your mind open and a lot more doors will open for you. Chris, you're afraid of people from the internet. It's only fair that a woman would be wary as well. It doesn't mean she's a troll or anything. A woman doesn't owe you anything, so don't expect that they have to meet you on your terms. Keep that in mind and you'll be mute successful. Colon close parentheses. Chris wrote back, criticizing her for softly calling him fat, and recited a spontaneously envisaged story inspired by a Lego set about a couple with weight problems. She replied, pointing out that he was the one who was making fun of people wider than himself, and reconsidered her efforts in helping him on OKCupid, okay since she felt that he was better at getting women than she was. Christian disagreed, and asked for her continued help. Also on the 24th, Chris updated his Facebook profile cover photo, a picture of his Sonichu characters made out of a mix of Lego figurines and modeling clay. To many observers' surprise, the family included Simone Le Rose Chu, the character that he was forced into killing off in his comics because it was largely lifted from Evan Christopher George's Simon Chu. He followed up with an album of photos featuring Simone Le in a range of positions, including one in which she is copulating with her romantic partner, Wild Sonichu. Kim left a comment, accusing him of being dishonest because he had made a promise that Simona would remain dead. Chris wrote that he had revived her and that her death was troll influenced, so he aimed to eventually redraw her death pages to show that she was not dead. Kim criticized him for breaking his promise, to which Chris replied, Everyone, sing along. I don't care. I don't care. Oh look, a free hat. I don't care. You can put on clean bra and underwear, cause I don't care. I will do what I want, when I want, and no troll is going to rewrite MY history. Simone LaRosechu lives on as a model construction working mother of Sandy with her husband, Wild Sonichu. P.S. The Voltorb was properly diffused and released back into the wilds of Kanto's abandoned electric plant. The damn trolls were still put under arrest. No bloody punishment was ensued upon the guilty. I personally beat the living crap out of them and Daniel Mims, then let them live out their lifelong prison sentence in the offshore prison stronger than Alcatraz. So there. Chris deleted some of William's more critical comments, while Kim highlighted that if he wanted to remove trollsome influences from his story, then Sandy, Simone's offspring, could not exist either. During the second half of May, under the username Jesus Guides Me Too, Chris listed a handful of items originally belonging to his father on the online auction site eBay. These included several vintage model plane construction sets and a copy of a 1721 Antonio Stradivarius violin. The model planes were listed as new and in mint condition, even though the boxes showed visible water damage. 
a Quickie Forms member masquerading as a Sonichu fan queried Chris on eBay, stating that he would buy a model kit if he drew another comic issue of Sonichu. Chris left an angry response. I gave up my PS3 to the damn trolls for $900 by destroying it, and nobody paid me ever. What the hell makes you believe I would volunteer any creation of mine for anyone online just so they could pervert it and make more humiliation and incriminate upon myself and my family of characters where I would obviously receive no financial funding whatsoever? Tell that to everyone in your circle. Regarding the violin, Chris received some questions on eBay, most likely from persons simply interested in buying the instrument. They stated that the violin looked a little beaten up and that the bow needed restringing. If a buyer chose the more expensive buy it now price of $300, Chris and his mother would get the bow restrung before shipping. On May 28th, Chris begged on Facebook for someone to buy the Stradivarius violin copy because he and his mother needed the money. Soon after, he posted two photos of two Lego sets that were sent to him as a present. He thanked the sender and then once again listed the Lego sets that he needed the most. William Waterman left a comment. Chris, this is greedy. You're trying to sell your father's violin, which we don't know if you wanted the family to keep it because you desperately need the money. And at the same time, you are begging for replacements of your Lego sets that melted on public posts. Do you not see what's wrong with this? People will think you're just selling one of your late father's possessions to buy Legos. If you delete my comment, I saved the backup. Chris did not address his comments. The following day, he posted a photo of a Lego friend's construction set and commented, I really want this! Multiples of these! At around the same time, a Quickie Forms member contacted him inquiring about one of the model airplanes he was interested in buying. He managed to convince him to sell it for $17.99, as stated on the box, rather than for Chris's original asking price of $50. On June 1st, Christian listed a new drawing of Sonichu and Rosechu up for sale on eBay. Starting bid was set at $20, and there was an option to buy it now for $100. He offered a grayscale copy of the picture as an anti-forgery measure. He also notified his Facebook friends about it and clarified Rosechu's gender. In case you were paying attention, the Raichu tail is female! Just as the Rosechu that transformed from the original female Raichu has always been and will always be Virginia ovaries, C-cup milking breasts with tits and all! Trolls and onlookers soon focused in on this auction, which was shared in a thread on the website 4chan. During the first day, many bid on the item, continuously increasing the latest price of the drawing for which they had no means nor intention of paying. Kristen added an extended disclaimer to the description, stating that no altercations could be made to the drawing and that it would be mailed to the highest valid bidder in a photo frame. At around 24 hours after he posted the drawing, the highest bid was $13,200. Soon after, the listing was removed. On June 2nd, Chris relisted the artwork with a starting bid of $100 and an option to buy it now at $500. On Facebook, he wrote that the original listing was removed because his name as a celebrity was in the title. To a person on eBay with a query about the price, Chris wrote that he had to increase the starting bid and buy it now value due to rising interest and hurt from the trolls. He included some additional details, such as a black and white photo of the drawing in its photo frame, a color close-up of Sonichu and Rosechu's groins, and a shot of his signature and date of drawing, which he mistakenly wrote as a date two weeks into the future. He acknowledged the mistake and wrote that it could not be changed as the picture had already been laminated. This listing's highest bid soon reached over $15,000 before it was removed again, this time for having links to his Facebook page in the description. On June 3rd, he listed the drawing for the third time, now with the Buy It Now option of $1,000. He added a photo of himself holding up the framed picture in question. He later made a Facebook post, hinting that he had also been trying to sell the drawing outside of his eBay listing's terms, which he was now restricted from doing. The next day, Christian modified the listing to remove any bidding and offered the drawing only as an immediate purchase with an asking price of $5,000. The item received many offers, though all were rejected by Chris because they were too low or that the bidders had less than 10 points of feedback. After some time, he brought the asking price down to $2,500. He shortly accepted an offer of $1,000 from a buyer who had only received two feedback comments in his eBay history. On June 5th, 
Chris confirmed that the buyer was unwilling to pay $1,000 for the drawing, so he relisted the picture again, setting the Buy It Now price at $1,000, with no option for bidding. He further stated the importance of selling the drawing on Facebook, the proceeds from which would go to his mother and his mother's debts and living. On June 8th, Chris received an email from eBay, notifying him that his listing was once again removed due to him advertising the listing on Facebook, which could be seen as a desire to make transactions through private messages and bypassing the necessary fees on eBay. He made it clear on Facebook that he was willing to put the drawing back up on eBay with a non-negotiable price of $1,000. He also claimed that people have instead been giving money to the Quickie and the Quickie forms. Soon after this announcement, he relisted the item, though it was soon removed again. Chris received another email from eBay, telling him that his account had been reviewed and was given a three-day suspension from posting any new items on the site. He wrote an angry Facebook post, blaming the troll's actions for his recent development, and determined that the only way to make up for it was to stop donating to the Quickie and Quickie forums, and demanded that someone donate $1,000 to his personal PayPal account. The next day, he added that he will send the framed drawing to the first person who sends him $1,000 via PayPal. Once he has paid the amount, he expressed that he will price future drawings more reasonably. However, if no one sends him the money within the next three days, he will relist the drawing on eBay again, with the same price tag attached. As members of the Kooky forums discussed the likelihood of Chris using the proceeds of the sale for Legos, a person got in touch with Chris privately, who later shared a screenshot of their messages, revealing that he was planning on using 25% of the asking price on Legos, with $500 going for his mother and the remainder to pay off debts. On June 12th, Christian put the drawing up for sale for the sixth time, with no change to the Buy It Now amount. The drawing received many offers, though all were declined. Less than four hours after it was relisted, the item was taken down from eBay again, and Chris informed his followers and his friends on Facebook. Ugh! Persephone! Fuck me! The listing got removed AGAIN! He also showed that the email he received from eBay stated that he was banned for offering a direct PayPal transaction option for the item in his description, which was in violation of their terms of service. This resulted in another three-day ban from the site. And in the meantime, Chris wrote again that he will send the framed drawing to the first person who sends him $1,000 via PayPal. Once he has paid the amount, he expressed that he will price future drawings more reasonably. However, if no one sends him the money within the next three days, he will relist the drawing on eBay again, with the same price tag attached. At around the same time, Chris allegedly received a small Lego set as a present from someone who called themselves Alex and thanked him publicly on Facebook. On June 15th, Chris commemorated Father's Day by posting a birthday card he made for his father Bob on Facebook and wrote that he missed him every day. Also on that day, Quickie Forms user Skyraider91, who had previously leaked photos of the Chandler's house on the forums, began leaking many scans of documents and school homework papers, which were obtained by rummaging through the dumpster next to the house or within the house itself. The leaks largely consisted of Chris's homework assignments in Manchester High School. The papers showed signs of both water and fire damage. The next day, Chris put up his Sonichu and Rooster drawing on eBay one more time, once again setting the Buy It Now price at $1,000. Two days later, after declining several offers that did not meet his expectations, Chris lowered the price of the picture to $500. He went to Facebook to explain why he declined offers. I only declined the offers for good reasons. Zero feedback are often trolls. If they really can offer more than the asking price or close equal, then they can afford to buy it now. I'm very reasonably paranoid. So there. On June 18th, Chris wrote a Facebook post about his frequent mental blanks and said that when he often did not respond to online questions, he was not able to because the numerous questions he was getting made him feel like he was being accused of something, which would give him a headache. On the 21st, he changed the main photo of his original drawing listing to a full color photo of the picture in its frame. On that same day, he relisted his father's Stradivari's filing copy on eBay, stating that the bow had been restrung. It soon disappeared from his account. It returned the next day, accompanied by a Facebook post in which Chris repeated that the bow had been restrung and that the item was not fake. On the 22nd, moments before the Sonichu and Roastu drawings week-long listing concluded, Chris accepted an offer outside of his desired $500 goal. He confirmed this on Facebook, stating that if the buyer did not pay for it, he would relist the item again. Also on June 22nd, Chris learned of the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog game and accompanying animated TV series, Sonic Boom. 
He was strongly angered by the redesign of the character Sonic, who was going to have blue colored arms rather than the traditional tan color. He pleaded for Sonic's arm colors to be changed back, and compared the distress he felt to the many people who felt that singer Michael Jackson should never have changed his skin color. At around the same time, Chris joined Rebrick, a social media platform where users could share photos of their LEGO creations and collections. Here, he shared his custom characters and his LEGO Manchester High School. Due to the attention Chris had gotten over the Sonichu and Roastu picture during the month of June, Christian began drawing custom commission-based pictures privately. Some drawings were completed for a price of $200. Toward the end of June, Chris began an online correspondence with an unknown male friend who had commissioned several drawings from him. Chris first informed him that he had asked his gal pal to help him connect with potential girlfriends on OkCupid, but she had since retired her services for him and now asked his friend to contact local women on his behalf. The man showed great hesitation for his task and instead suggested that he could give Chris advice on what to say. He told Chris that the goal at the beginning should not be to get women to meet him as soon as possible to become his girlfriend, but rather he should show genuine interest in their personality. To Chris's surprise, the friend revealed that he was not well versed in acquiring romantic partners and that he instead only had gal pals. Christian then followed by stating that he felt meeting women in a public place shortly after first contact was far superior than having a solely online-based relationship, recounting the many times he had heartbreaks over fake internet girlfriends. He felt that he had a chance to pair up with Casey, Liquid Chris's girlfriend, before his friend reminded him that Liquid and Casey were both trolls and that they never truly cared for him. After several more messages, Chris advised his friend to peruse the online marketplace website Craigslist to find himself a hoe to play with and lose his virginity, since it was a great experience for Chris, and ever since then, he did not obsess about sex as much. The friend was appalled by the suggestion. On the final day of June, Chris stated that the final buyer of the Sancho and Roaster drawing backed out of the deal, and so relisted the drawing on eBay for a lower asking price of $200. It was soon sold to an unknown, legitimate buyer. On July 1st, Christian offered autographed photos for $20 each on eBay. Willing buyers could choose from a selection of different photographed self-portraits. He also advertised drawing commissions on the auction site, showcasing his previous commission projects as examples of his work. He offered black and white sketches for $50, full color drawings for $100, and full color drawings complete with a photo frame and handwritten certificate of authenticity for $200. He received great interest for his autographed photos and drawing requests, and thanked his followers on Facebook, promising that he will devote the next few days for fulfilling everyone's requests. Less than one hour later, he shared a link to an amusing-looking LEGO minifigure head up for sale on eBay. His drawing commissions included a photo collage featuring wrestlers, an album cover requested by the Japanese experimental noise band L'Eclipse New, and some depictions of his Sonichu characters in different scenarios, including a scene of Chris and Clyde Cash reconciling and shaking hands. A Quickie Forms member calculated that over the first nine days of July, Christian likely made around $1,500 across all his available eBay sales. Also in early July, Christian's new OkCupid profile under the username LevelUpKing was leaked on the Quickie Forms. Not long after, he began contacting a woman named Catherine on the site, who was in fact a fabricated persona created by trolls. He kept their relationship private for the time being. On July 14th, Chris listed his father's 1990 appearance as a guest host for WTJU Radio's Jazz Marathon on eBay. He offered the audio as a 6 CD set for $50. The next day, he wrote that $10 from each sale of the CD set would be donated to WTJU Radio, and also offered a deal wherein for that week only, anyone who purchased the CD set would also get a free autographed photo or $20 off of a black and white drawing commission. He was asked on eBay if he had permission from copyright holders to sell the music, with Chris replying that he did not own the music and felt that he shared the rights to his father's voice on the recordings. A forum member also messaged him about the reasoning for selling the recordings for $50 when Chris himself had made them available as a free download in December 2012. Chris replied, stating that downloading the content for free was internet piracy because it was stealing the content without Bob's family receiving any dues from it. A few days later, in response to possible criticism, Chris stated that he had full permission from the radio station's general manager to proceed with the eBay listing. 
The official Facebook page from the radio station later clarified that when they first got a call from Chris about selling Bob's appearance on the radio show, they assumed that he was a musician who had played a live set on air. But later, they received calls about the eBay listing and learned about the true nature of Chris's intentions. They stated that what he was doing was not legal and would contact him shortly about the matter. The listing was soon removed from eBay, by which time two individuals had purchased CDs, who would instead receive an autographed photo and a black and white drawing respectively at no added charge, rather than a refund. Chris wrote that they would also get complimentary CDs. Also in the month of July, because of the purchase of his original Sonichu and Rosechu drawing, he listed another original piece of artwork starring Sonichu, also set at $200. This was soon accompanied by one focused on Rosechu. On July 17th, Chris uploaded a gameplay video of the Nintendo game Mario Kart 8, played on his Wii U, both on his Miiverse account and his YouTube channel. He would upload more Mario Kart videos sporadically over the next year. A week later, Christian wrote in a Facebook post that proceeds from his eBay sales would help greatly the dental treatment which his mother Barbara desperately needed. He then revealed the photo the customers would get if they did not select one from his options, which featured a return of his Sonichu medallion after several years of not being worn. The following day, he offered a free character drawing for every autographed photo sold until Monday, the 28th. On that day, he stated that he needed the money to buy a new ink cartridge, help pay to ship out his orders, and to make up for the money spent by Barbara impulsively purchasing entertainment center furniture from Goodwill. Meanwhile, Members of the Quickie forums noted that Chris had recently spent almost $190 on a DVD set of the Japanese animated series Sailor Moon and $100 on a Lego castle construction set. On August 2nd, Chris went to Facebook to express his gratitude for a custom-made plush doll of Sonichu that he received from a fan. It reminded him of a previous plushie that he got before the house fire, which was destroyed by the flames, along with an oil painting of Sonichu and the Aspertree medallion that was sent to him by Alec Benson Leary which saddened him. The following day, he begged for money from his friends and followers, noting that even though he made over $2,000 on eBay last month, he did not have enough money to send out all the purchases to his buyers because that money was spent on bills, printer ink cartridges, shipping, some Lego, and food for his family. In addition, he wanted to raise enough money to fix his mother's teeth. In response to allegations of improper Lego purchases, on August 5th, Christian notified on Facebook that he had mostly purchased Legos to replace all the sets that were destroyed by the fire and to contribute to a future business scheme of creating custom minifigures stylized to look like Sonichu characters. Two days later, Chris wrote a lengthy post targeting his trolls. Attention everyone! I'm long devastated and exhausted of all the hate I've been receiving from the people who are not only labeled bad, trolls, and bullies. But absolutely, none of you all know anything better than what impulsively comes into your aging and decreasing brains. All of you impulsively choose those you consider to be weak, stupid, even misusing the word gay, to define something or someone as STUPID, or even somewhat remotely better than yourselves, just so you can downsize their self-confidence and ego, when you have absolutely no self-confidence or ego in yourselves. You all are misaiming your anger and impulsive hatred to someone who is not even remotely related to you or even remotely involved in your own lives. All of you are not angry at me! All of you are not angry at Britney Spears, Pamela Anderson, Katy Perry, or any female superstar. All of you are not angry at Jerry Seinfeld, Tim Allen, Jay Leno, or any male superstar. All of you are not angry at anyone else similar or different or whatever. All of you are truly angry at the misfortunes in your own individual lives. All of you are truly angry at the actual local people around you who have shunned you or labeled you wrongfully, so that you'll end up throwing those same labels upon innocent people who do not deserve that kind of emotional devastation at all. And the people who wrongfully labeled you all individually have had those same labels directly, wrongfully bestowed onto them, or otherwise indirectly learned from someone else who was wrongfully labeled as well. All of you are wrong to throw your own hatred of those around you who more appropriately deserve it onto any other person who does not deserve it to begin with. Wars get started because those people and all of you do not have any better ideas. All of them and you solely take the immediate impulse that falls in a second to hurt someone else in an unrequited attack on that individual or someone else who did not deserve it to begin with. Every individual in this world is not perfect. Every individual in this world has some sort of mental defect or physical problem, 
or emotional devastation, albeit minuscule or more grand than the size of the universe. There is no real strong person, because those strong people are all weak as well in some area. And the higher force above us is always messing with each of our individual minds every day. Rather each of you call him God, Emmanuel, Zeus, Buddha, or even the individual destiny of your own. I am not an atheist, because I sincerely believe in the higher force of above us. Even Jesus may be the higher force's son. But every religion will have you believing in the one same higher force. Right or wrong, it is truly set up to each individual perception of every individual soul among us the billions of people on this big blue marble among marbles in the universe. If all of you bullies really want to be angry at someone, do not pester or torture the innocent people who did not deserve it to begin with. Go take it up with the higher force, which had tweaked that individual person or situation upon yourself in your own prayers. It may or may not listen, but at least you can speak it out of your system in private rants and shouts in your own domicile, residence, or hole in the ground. And then nobody else on this planet would have to take any unrequited abuse or feel more devastated or hurt than they each already are in their own way. Why is someone else's life indirect to your own immediately any important enough that they need to be tortured? Let them all just be. Let us all live. Sigh. Kim Wilson left a comment, refuting his claims that bullies only attack others because they hate themselves, designating the concept as an 80s and 90s television cliché. She stated that people who criticize others are often very successful and happy in their personal lives, and that he should keep in mind that all criticism is valuable, regardless of its origin. On that same day, Chris posted a new original drawing up for sale on eBay, a depiction of Sonichu and Rose Chu's wedding. On August 14th, in addition to more necessary money and eBay orders, Christian asked if anyone could provide him with a special trading card from a My Little Pony themed trading card game, which was valued on eBay at $100. He later posted two images on Facebook in support of human equal rights for all people of all genders and orientations and also came out as a tom girl, intersex a female soul with male body, and a tranny crossdresser. He also changed his profile picture to one with an embedded icon showing support for the pro-LGBT human rights campaign. He left a reply in the comment section, clarifying that he identified himself as a lesbian identified male and encouraged others to search the term on the internet. He also wrote that he fully supported the LBT community and begrudgingly accepted the gay males. He further wrote that his mother still not approved of him wearing female clothing and short skirts as of late, wishing for her to embrace his tendencies to flirt the skirt. Chris then added a comment to clarify his stance towards all the various genders. I just sorted it out how to best nutshell the details. I hardly get along with males at all, not counting being civil. I get along better with females, totally! I hardly identify myself with the barbarian and stereotypical males at all. I identify best with the feminine ways, emotions, empathy, and about everything else. I get disgusted with the damn dicks, including my own. I want to shove my face into the big hole below the urethra, known as the beautiful vagina very much. I'm feminine on the inside, male on the outside. My feminine soul is most attracted and aroused by women and their superior beauty. Male bodies are horrendous and most offensive to me. Talk about going from the middle to hell's deep on the beauty slash ugly thermometer. Female and male on female and female equals lesbian identified man. No more questions. Christian then revealed his new identity as a lesbian identified man and the cross-dressing transsexual in a post on his Braziers for Males Facebook page, pleading for all males to wear sports bras and skirts if they wish to do so. He closed his post by stating his intentions to take part in a pride parade if there was one in his area. On August 15th, since Chris was interested in going on a date with Catherine in Fashion Square, he wrote a two-page letter addressed to the manager of the mall from which he had been banned. He apologized for his loud outbursting misconduct slash misbehavior, which was instigated by internet trolls. He wrote that he had matured emotionally and mentally since his ban and was in a serious relationship with a woman whom he deeply loved, a feeling which should not be mistaken for the act of intercourse. He thusly wanted to get readmitted into the mall so that they could shop there together. In addition, he wrote a similar letter of apology to get unbanned from the Walmarts in Charlottesville and Rutgersville, relaying the exact same sentiment about his relationship and wish to go shopping together. Finally, he wrote a four-page letter of apology addressed to Mary Lee Walsh of Piedmont Virginia Community College, apologizing for depicting her in his comics as an evil witch. Chris then reminded her of his attraction sign, which he forbade, 
and said that had she not have made it obvious to him that true love was illegal in the state of Virginia, he would have never drawn her as a witch character, which resulted in increased attention for her from the trolls. He requested that he be unbanned from the campus so he could have the liberty to attend on-campus events and attend classes for the sake of his present and future family. On August 16th, Chris wrote an extended post on Facebook, apparently confessing that he would not let himself be bothered by Troll's actions anymore, because only his true friends knew of his genuine caring nature and respected him being a lesbian and a tranny. I no longer am going to care so easily for the opinions of the lot of you. I used to care, and that has hurt me mentally and emotionally very harshly, but not anymore. You all can just go ahead and call me gay, meaning stupid, dumb, or homo, because I am homo for women, and none of any of you are going to ever change who I am there. Go ahead and give out my phone number, email, and all that shit, because I will never respond to any of you haters as hazers. My closest friends and allies mean a heart and soul full to me than any of you strangers, because I've never even been remotely familiar with any of you before 2007, and very likely I never will have the displeasure of even making your acquaintance in person ever, and this is the last time I will ever say anything in response to your shitful and hurtful comments and hatred for hate's sake. So there. On August 17th, Christian changed his Facebook cover photo to a picture of his Lego incarnation, holding the hand of a female Lego minifigure, representing Catherine, who was wearing a miniature paper replica of his sonnetry medallion, which sparked discussion on the quickie forums over the existence of a possible new sweetheart. One week later, he posted a so-called poll on Facebook, intended to be answered only by internet trolls. He asked them if they not liked the rage face comic genre of internet memes, especially the often featured troll face, and if the trolls answered yes, they were to click the like button on his post. On August 25th, he announced that Sonichu disliked pickles in his comics because he was severely allergic to them, writing that eating a whole pickle would paralyze Sonichu. Chris then stated that Sonichu and most of his other characters were heterosexual, apart from Robbie Sonichu, who was a total lesbian tomgirl tranny crossdresser, lesbian tomgirl Sarah Rosechu, and bisexual Crystalline Rosechu. On the final day of the month, Christian went on a date with Catherine while wearing the perfume Fantasy by Britney Spears. She was accompanied by a troll playing the part of her cousin, Al, who drove her to meet Chris at the predetermined date location, the restaurant Applebee's. The audio of their entire conversation was covertly recorded. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mom. Um, this is my cousin. Uh, yeah, Katie, uh, yeah, my car was in the garage, so I gave her a ride. So, yeah. It is nice to finally meet you. You're here. Yeah. Yep, I'm here. Yeah. So glad. I'm glad to meet you as well. I like your earrings. They're very pretty. Thank you. Yeah. I like your earrings too. Oh, thank you. And what? How have you been? I've been doing very well, thank you. Uh, this is for you. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. What? He's made me a mix CD. And there's a story that goes with it. First, to print out about the details of your birth date. And the two drawings I drew for you so far. so Put it in my purse. Oh. Get hurt in the table. Well, I think the state's going pretty good so far. Yeah. yeah. I should hope so. After discussing Chris's family, they move on to the topic of his gender identity. So I see you wore your, um, your Tom girl vest today. My vest, yes. Kilt. Or at least kilt pattern. It was the only thing yeah. I could find at the Goodwill there that fit, that fit me. I think it was another one, but I think it was like smaller. Chris, I'm I'm not trying to be offensive or nothing, but what's what's this whole Tom girl thing? I just oh, I don't understand. This is essentially where I'm. Uh, it's like a tomboy where you where women are interested in boyish things and high activity. I'm in I'm in some more feminine things. So you're like a cross dresser then? Or? Yeah, so I, yes, you can call me a tranny. I, I accepted that term. I'm a lesbian, tom girl, transgender male. So I'm three quarters woman. Okay. The only, the only difference is the body. <laughs> yeah. They certainly have a unique fashion sense, I'll say that. So. Mm. It is fairly unique, that's what I mean. Yeah. Fairly unique, but I'm sure I could be shaped up a little more sophisticated or whatever. 
Yep. It's always your favorite movie for everybody, I think. Yeah, I think so. Catherine later revealed Chris's demeanor during the date. He kept trying to hold my hand, so I negotiated lunch like a T-Rex with strumpy little arms. Then he tried footsie under the table, and he stared at my tits a lot. I kept hoping cousin Al would say something, but he never did. In retrospect, I should have called him out on it. So what What are your goals, plans, whatever? You guys gonna get married or what? Well, we might. Might do one day. Mm. It's going pretty well so far. Yeah, I think, so. I'm thinking we'll probably be together more often, I hope. Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, you were talking about wanting to get married too. So yes. So you said you wanted to be in the next five years or so. Yeah, within the next five years. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, but that's up to you, though. When you, when you feel ready to get married, I'll be, I'll be there by your side at the chapel. <laughs> I should hope so. Yeah. Me too. And I'm still in full support of who you are as well. Remember? Yeah, the um, open relationship. So you've got open relationship? Uh, yeah, I'll yeah, always support her, you know. You know her as a, you know her as a bi, I'm sure. Or, so you're okay with her being with other women? Yeah. That, <laughs> other ideas that, in my Does head. that include other men, too? Um, well... Optionally for her, uh, but for me, I would, I would definitely. If it was, if I felt up to it, it would be with another woman, definitely. But she expressed her interest in other women as well. Uh, I mean, I don't want to go too much into that. It sounds a little bit embarrassing. Just Chris, Chris, you love her, right? Yes, I do. I care about her. So why would you be okay with her having sex with other men? Well. I mean, that's a fair question. It's a fair question, yes. It's more like uh, if I can't satisfy her, if she feels lack of satisfaction, I, I made very clear for her that our relationship would be honest and loyal to each other. So as long as she, as long as she lets me know that she, fe if she feels like she needs to see somebody else, then that's fine. I'll let her go. And uh, so, sort of like an open marriage thing, where each of you can see other people. Well, we're not going to marry other people. Oh, no, no, no. We're just not like married. see other people. Yeah, like, but yeah just like see inside. other people. It's like to take a break from each other as well. Because I've, I've learned from a lot of television about where marriages end up bad because one cheats on the other. Yeah, but this way it's an open relationship, so we're being honest with each other. And I've, I've come to terms with that being part of a healthier relationship. I mean, you know, even modernly, sometimes the couples, the married couples, they'll sleep in separate rooms if they felt need to. Sleep in separate rooms? Like after a fight or something, maybe? No, no essentially, yeah, they get married and they decide uh, it's like... They don't, one doesn't feel comfortable sleeping right next to the other, so they end up with separate rooms. But they still love each other and care each other. In fact, it gives them more room to breathe. So that have you had relationships like that then, where uh, you've been no, kept I haven't, distance? Well, I haven't had too many relationships really. Um, but yeah, there was uh, one where she, where one where one where there's one girl definitely definitely wanted me to keep my distance from her. She thought I was getting too close to her. <sighs> That's why I learned how to restrain my how to keep my hands to myself for a while. Yeah, I suppose you feel very strongly about respecting other people's boundaries. Oh yes, I do. After a while, the three move on to discussing the house fire. So Chris, you're saying that your house fire got started by some of the appliances at the Keurig? Yeah, the Keurig coffee bill was plugged into the extension cord, plugged into the bathroom wall, and the fire happened at the arch where it was over the door frame, over the door. Oh, I was going to say, if it was the, the coffee maker, I would have sued the hell out of those bastards. Yeah, but, yeah, but I thought, we, we thought for, for a while that's why it was too, the coffee brewer, but uh, unfortunately, it turned out to be an extension cord after the fire inspector confirmed that. Uh, we didn't have one that was closer. The closest one there was behind a really big dresser. And the house was cluttered. I had lots of stuff, and my mom, being a, as impulsive as she was, a good will sometimes, that didn't help much either. But, you know, that was like God told us, hey, Barbara, I'll make it easier for you. There you go, fire, get out of the house. Yeah, because she was concerned about all that clutter as well, didn't know where to put it. I guess that is that how she's coping. So your mother thinks that God was telling her to move out of the house, so he, God burnt it down? Is that what she believes? That's, that's, that's one idea she has. 
The food's great. Yeah. Her sounds good? Yes. Just nibbling? Yeah, me too. I'm just nibbling. Do you nervous? Oh, a little bit. Uh, I, 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 I have a bit of a soda drink. I drink a lot of soda throughout my life, so I end up with a shaky leg also. That's one thing my mother complains about when that, that shakes the house also. Your shaky leg shakes the whole house. Well, when I'm standing. Uh, not as much when I'm sitting down here. So I think you just like, your leg fidgets a little bit, shakes like that? Yeah. That's actually, people who fidget like that, they burn more calories. Mm. Well, now I feel weird because I don't know. Really... Uh, well, don't worry, guys. Maybe you live with me long enough, you'll pick up on the habit. <laughs> just kidding. I don't know about living together. Like I said, my dad's really emotional. Yeah. Well, that's another thing, another obstacle to relationships. Sometimes you travel a lot, so if it's long distance and you can't see each other, that's a challenge. So It takes effort. It takes a lot of effort. And I am willing to put in the effort. Well, I live in Colfax, so it's not that far away. It's not that far away. Plus, you can always move in with me and my mom if you felt, when you felt comfortable. And then, yeah, we'll find you a library right here that'll hire you. Yep. Christian then revealed to Catherine and Dell his various experiences with internet trolls and elaborated on his troubles concerning the gameplays. Well, yeah, this was October 2011. Michael Snyder, the game and hobby place, I had been banned from there because Michael Hayden, my Gus, April 2008. And uh, he, was just, he was definitely a total asshole. But how was he an asshole to you? He was just very mean, uncaring. He wouldn't even. If he wouldn't even give consideration when I went in one time before that, that uh, just asking him, is it, is it okay? Everything's passed, everything. And he's like, no. He's like, no. And he wanted to call the police on evidence, so I left. Yeah, I was like, uh, well, I had an audio recording, and, it got up and I uploaded it for the reason I had at the time. Wait, wait a second, why would you record it and then why would you upload it? What, what uh, did you because, upload it to? Uh, because I, well, it was because, you know, so I could prove that Michael was as mean as he was. If he had not been mean, I would not have uploaded it at all. But I mean, it was an audio recording. I had a digital camera in my pocket and it recorded the audio. And when, when was this? Yeah, what? this was like, um, I think 2009 or 10. Okay, so it's a few years ago. Yeah. And then you said you got arrested in 2011? Yeah, because uh, it was a trap essentially. Uh, my mother and I, we were, we were, we were in that part of town, and we saw a sign in the store window that said "Under New Management." So I figured Michael was gone, right? Yeah. But no, he was, he was the new manager of the place now, and he had the police on. Call ready, ready right there at the people at the Staples at store to to be like witness to be like witnesses and everything. And Mom and I we tried to make our escape, but they wouldn't. Let, but nobody would let us. And then like Snyder paid the police, don't beat the crap out of them and arrest them, something like that. He bribed the cops. Yeah. Why would he do that? Why would he hate you so? Happy birthday, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Well, how did you find out that he bribed the cops? Like, yeah. Did uh, we're pretty much. Yeah. Well, pretty much. Uh, my mom figured it out essentially. And, you know, it's like it's like two common sense to put two and two together. And he figured that he would profit from me and my mother. He thought we were rich, but we were not so rich. We ended up losing a lot of money we had that Mr. C, my father, had left us. And uh, paying the court lawyer fees. So what what were you charged with then? I mean, it sounds like you didn't really do anything. Uh, yeah, we were charged with trespassing. You it said was, you tried to make an escape. Did you run from the cops? Uh, a bit, yeah. Wow. Yeah, they were they were blocking. They were trying to block our path out, but we made it out. But then they cornered us at the nearby court building in the back parking lot behind the building. I've, Chris, I've had to deal with cops myself, and I gotta say, 
you never look forward to dealing with the cops, but there's still the police. You got to treat them with respect, even if they're, you know, even if you don't like them, you still have to deal. Even if you don't agree with what they're dealing, you still have to show respect. It's just important to do. Yeah, that's still the process I'm trying to get to hold the giving, uh, pulling the good from the bad from, and I'm still seeing bad in a lot of them because yeah. with the bribery and everything, they can be corrupted. Because yeah. you don't know what's going on in their heads. And uh, Snyder, he pretended to be like hit by our van, but he did not. But the van was still, still he like hit the bumper and played falls twice. So the van was not moving. It was he walked up to the van and then like fell back. Uh, well, he stood there like uh, the general who Stonewall Jackson, the Confederate general. Yeah, like stood there like Stonewall Jackson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he continued to talk about his various experiences with the trolls. I've actually met a few of them in person once really? once or twice. How did you, how did that happen? Well, one of them was kind of like a setup uh, where I thought I was going to make a new girlfriend there. I thought it wouldn't be that one time, but it turns out there was a camera recording uh, and hiding from somewhere else, recording everything that was going on on that conversation. Oh, really? Yeah, and then, uh, so, and then this other guy came in dressed in a pickle costume. A pickle costume? costume. <laughs> Why would he be dressed in a pickle costume? I'm sorry, costume? I'm not looking at you. This yeah. is so absurd. Yeah, I know it is absurd. Pickle costume? Uh, because oh. earlier in the Science Shoe comics, I drew Science Shoe eating lunch with Rose Chew. Uh -huh. he, uh, he was eating a sandwich. He had pickles on it. Uh, he was like, I hate pickles. Mm. Yeah, because I don't like pickles either. Oh, okay. What time is it? We've got to go back to the mechanics. It's, uh, yeah, what time? It's 10 after 3. It's 10 after 3, yeah, they close at 4 30. Okay, well, well, we'll wrap it up here in a few yeah, minutes. So they've got, they've got my car. I'm gonna find out what's wrong yeah. with it. Where, where, you, where, where was the uh, mechanic? Where's, where's the garage then? I'm not sure. If it's uh, we don't know the. You don't know the street address? No, we don't. Do you, we don't have it's the street in, it's address? It's in the RJPS. I'm not yeah. Sure if it's okay. Yeah. Well, I'll just. I'll follow y'all. It's a pretty there. long way to the mechanics. Well, so. yeah. It's, it's near my place. He's gonna drop me off, and then I, he's gotta go back home for work. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll cool. see if I can make the for you. That's yeah. two weeks. That's on the 13th. Yeah. yeah, so it's two weeks from now. I'll try and see if I yeah. can make sure, but like I said, I'm back walking yeah. dogs. And, uh, well, you can always talk thousands. with Katie over Skype, right? Christian suggested that they could visit his house in Rutgersville, which was still being renovated and repaired. Catherine and Al took him up on his offer.